Hi, this is John with StarMake, and today we're going to unbox and review the Monoprice Maker Select i3. Stay tuned. At first glance, the cardboard is heavy. The foam on the inside is nice custom fit. You've got this bag uh, around around the packet of foam just in case the, the box gets wet. You also have this little full color printed leaflet thing here. Um, it'll get you started, but you really need to look at the PDF that I believe is still on the micro SD card or you can go online and and get a, get a copy of that there. It's kind of a good idea to um, maybe take some photos or a little bit of cell phone video once you get this Tetris piece of, of packing uh, undone. If you do need to send the printer back for any kind of warranty repair, um, good luck getting it back, uh, getting it back the way it, it came. So let's pull this uh, let's pull this box here out uh, out first. And we've got a, a couple couple things in here. We've got a little bag of, um, I think these are M5 bolts. This is your micro SD card and SD card reader. Um, that goes in the trash. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, USB 2 cable. Eh. Power cord. Standard. Now this here is your filament holder. You would, uh, would kind of screw them together and then use two bolts to bolt it to the top of your printer. Definitely necessary. The standard uh, standard paint scraper. You'll find something better, likely. And a little bag of a couple of zip ties, a PTFE liner, uh, another two two bolts, and some um, and some some little wrenches. Now, when you're using the wrenches, the wrenches um, the wrenches are nice, but if you take the printer apart and put it back. Uh, you're going to need a, a better set of wrenches because these will actually strip pretty pretty quickly. All right, taking this last piece of foam out, we see everything. Now, here's the problem with the printer. Everything is connected, and there's no way to disconnect it. Here's your control box. You can uh, kind of pull that out of the way. This is the bed of the printer. I needed to pull the belt out of the way just to pull it out, but be real careful of the belts and, and be real careful of the sliding uh, bars as well. That right there is a test print from the factory. Uh, uh, pretty good. I'm, I'm glad they I'm glad they do that. And they seem to also tape up the, the edge the edges of the bed as well. Now this is the this is the center kind of vertical part. I'm taking a look at at everything there. And I you know since this is my third printer I really wanted to, I'm really interested in, in the differences and and I see a few. And as you can see, you can see how everything is is really uh, pretty well pretty well secured. Everything is uh, is connected as much as it will be. There will be a few connections to be made on the printer itself once we set it up. I'm checking to make sure the heater is is not one of the older the older style heater uh, heater cords where um, they they recommended you pull it out and get it out of the way, but this uh, this seems to be a very a very new model which which is is likely because I I did have to wait for them to get back in stock. You're going to also want to look at uh, a few of the things I've already taken the the tape off the first switch um, the the X axis that's the the Z axis switch. And there's also one more switch on the y-axis on the board. Um, I'm also checking to make sure, uh, just to, just just kind of playing around and seeing the the movement on that. It came it came off, which is fine. Um, it's it's easy to it's easy to fix. Well, it came off it came off as in um, it was it was a, a different height from from the other side, which is you know, no no big deal. that off to the side, put the bed off to the side, and see what else we've got in this box. 
And the only things left you have, um, you've got some, you know, big, big kind of pieces of, uh, you know, like masking tape, if, if that's your, if that's your poison for, for printing too. And, and when you get started, and unless you have, um, unless you have some glass ready to go, you're, you're going to want to use these. But eventually, you're going to upgrade, and a nice little roll of uh, PLA, kind of like a, a pastel green uh, roll of filament, and that's it. Okay, here we have the printer on our on our desk here. Now this printer doesn't have any feet, so what you need to do is, uh, you know, if you're if you're worried about scraping up the uh, your your work surface, put something down. I've got a little black towel here. I'm putting this on top the the uh, the control panel, the little LCD on top of the control panel for my other my other i3. I need to cut off this uh, this big heavy duty zip tie. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Need a pair of scissors or something. As nicely as this printer is is put together, you we're going to need to just tighten all the bolts up. And uh, right now we're just trying to get it together and get it printing. And we'll do a video a little bit down the road talking about disassembling it, making sure everything is as centered as possible and uh, and working as, as good as as good as it can. Now the next part is you need to slide this through here and there are, there are two screws on each side that that line up. It is quite a uh, it is quite a tight fit and here uh, eventually I'm going to to just need to pull the carriage up bring it through and then then push it down. Here's the tape on that last that last end switch and that is your Y switch. When the when the printer homes it will it will use that end switch as well as the other two that we've already pulled the tape off of to to figure out where the, the front left corner of the bed is. As you saw, I pulled the I pulled the carriage up, pull the carriage up, um, pull it up really, really carefully. Try to do both sides at the same time, or at least grab it in the middle. Bring the the bed through and then push it down. Your bag of the four bolts is is what you're going to need. And grab one of these. You know, it's going to be the largest of the of the four wrenches that come come with it. Put the printer on its side, being careful not to stress those cables. I seem to remember the older printer having a lot less wiggle room on those cables, but it might just be my imagination. And while I am trying to speed run this a little bit, I am going to go pick up some, some Loctite. Placing the first bolt in, there one goes from this side and one goes from the outside. One goes from the, the inside out and the outside in. That's two bolts on each each side. I get the bolt started and just give it a give it a generous dot of this Loctite. When I go back through to tighten up all the screws to uh, to try to center all the bars and go ahead and fix up my, my the tension on my belts I will I will likely uh, put another dab of either um, Loctite or you can also use nail polish if you've got like some clear or you know hey if you want funky colors that's up to you but it it will kinda help the the bolts from from working their way out which they shouldn't but if you move the printer uh, it's probably a, probably a good idea On this one here, I have just applied some of the Loctite to the threads to get it started, and then and then fed it through. Now 
Now, even though you have the, the first two in there, you are going to need to pivot this to, to make sure they, they fit in. If you need to loosen up the first two bolts a little bit to make it easier, you can. As long as you get them, them all in, you can tighten them up one by one. I mentioned this previously, but if you use these wrenches a lot, they are going to uh, to wear out. The ends are going to wear out on you. They're they're not very good wrenches at all. It will get you started, but eventually you're going to want to get a nice little wrench set to keep with with your printer at all times. Get something made of a a, a lot harder material. Last bolt, see if I can get this in here. At this point, don't uh, don't worry about putting the printer on, on whatever side. What you're, what you're going to worry about is touching the belt. You've got a belt that is, uh, is there on the bottom, and you've got a belt that goes side to side um, on that piece that, that sticks up as well. Probably not a bad idea to keep uh, to keep off those those shiny rods that are that are lubricated. Although it's really a good idea to, to pull the to pull the factory lubrication off and, and give it some something nicer. All right, we're done. While we're here. There's a zip tie right here. Now any of the cables you need to hook up, you need to hook up the cables on the on the servos. They are keyed, they can only go in one way, so don't worry about that. You also have a couple connections to the end switch. Actually one connection to the end switch in the back. This long cable here, once you once you set the printer upright, it will go to it'll go to one of the motors up top right here. And what this motor here does, this is your x-axis motor. This is what sends the carriage left and right. You also have this anti-stress sort of, um, oh, I don't know, sort of a, a cable protection here. Typically that comes not uh, with, not connected, and it's got, it's got two ears that go over a snap. Pretty easy to do. Double check your movements. Make sure everything seems to be rolling around fine. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just I'm just pushing down the the Z and that that is controlled by the, the little the the threaded rod on the left and the right and I'm just using a ruler to make sure they're both level. Periodically you want to make sure that that they both are. Just make sure you have all your your motors disabled so that they move freely and then you can use the the connection points on top of the servo motors where they connect to the threaded rods to to move one side up or down. Right here I've just plugged in the power cable, turned it on, and we've got power. At this point I'm going to pull off the, the sample print and the piece of tape. And because I really don't want to put that 
that masking tape on. I'm actually using a piece of framing glass uh, that is on my other printer. Clean that off a little bit. And I'll put it down. Um, I, what I need to do is I need to pull the tape off of all these wing nuts on the corners. A lot of people will tell you you need to use a borosilicate glass, and I've I've never had a problem. You need to be careful with it, of course. You don't need to pry any any prints off of it. But I use just regular thin framing glass, available at any of your uh, your local craft stores, and I cut it down to size for the bed. I don't worry about any kind of connection, and and it, it works really well. Um, I did start off using uh, glue sticks, but now I use hairspray and everything works out fantastic. I just pulled the micro SD card out and here's a problem. You want to use you want to use that that S, micro SD card once. You want to pull it out. You want to put uh, you want to take all the the G code files off of the of the card and put it on a better card and throw that and the adapter away. I've seen so many people on the forums have just random problems and it turns out to be just just file system issues. Now on uh, on all three, uh, excuse me, on, on two of the three printers, the third, the, the second printer I didn't really test it, but two of the three printers that I've had that micro SD to SD card reader did not work. Um, I needed to use one of my own or a I've got a little USB dongle that that will pull the the micro SD card in. That's a problem because if you're really trying to, to start printing as, as soon as you get the thing hooked up, um, you're going to be really disappointed until you get a, uh, a better way to, to, to read those cards. So I hope it's just a coincidence that I was stuck with two of them, but um, I really think not. Get yourself a, a well-known uh, well uh, name brand card, something like SanDisk or, or probably PNY is fine. I'm pulling the the tape. They tape this thing up pretty good. I'm I'm not cleaning the the tape up as as much as I need to. I'm just getting the tape off the wing nuts and the springs so that I can level this and go ahead and put a put a print through. I also have the the printer heating up just so it would get ready. It does take a little bit of time. It's not too bad. And now the infamous paper calibration test. Now this is a little bit thicker piece of paper. This is actually a, a, a little thicker uh, watercolor paper. I want to say um, maybe like 90 pound. Typically you would use a piece of 20 pound just letter paper, you know, just letterhead paper, copy, you know, copy paper, whatever and you want it to just barely grab you want to use those wing nuts to to uh, to to bring the bed up just barely have friction on that piece of 20 pound paper since i'm using paper that is thicker i like letting it uh, letting it really pull at the at, at the piece get every get all four corners set up so that they feel the same and then from there you can adjust them once you get the four corners the same you can do quarter turns, half turns, and um, let's see. Counterclockwise brings the bed down. Clockwise brings the bed up. Another problem that I have that I've had here, and you will too, is these these bolts that are in the corners of this bed. They do not want to stay. You're going to need to use your wrench, turn the wing nut, turn the wrench, whatever. Um, there is a mod that is that is highly, highly, highly recommended that allows you to, to really crank down the, the bolt there into the top top piece and then put um, you can either put your wing nuts back on or you can put a better uh, you can 3d print a nice a nice textured knob that that will snap in a little m3 bolt keep adjusting make sure you get it get it as, as perfect as possible this will save you a lot of headache in the in the long run
I've talked with many people that, that, that tell me about adhesion issues and they either um, they either eyeball this step or really don't give it the attention it deserves. You you really need to do um, probably about an inch an inch from from each corner and even though uh, even though I'm I'm testing this I do need to go back and, and really fully calibrate it once I get get the um, the bed leveling mod taken care of you want to go to all four corners and then do all four corners again and then check the center when you move one corner it can actually knock another corner out of whack so so test them test them a couple ways I think we're good enough to go. I'm pulling the sample filament out. By now the extruder and the bed temperature is up. I'm going to go ahead and put the spool holder up. Kind of kind of dusty from the factory. And those are just two the the two bolts that came in the bag with the with the wrenches and the zip ties get them lined up, hand tighten them. Crank them down a little bit more. I will go back and, and hit this with a little bit of the thread lock. This nice plastic piece, uh, on one end you'll have two Two kind of uh, two kind of nuts. I like taking them both off and and turning the one around. They they're they're rounded on one end and square on the other. I like having the rounded end towards the uh, towards where the filament would go. Put the other end on. Crank it down and you're good to go. Set your filament up there. Bring down one strand. Now, right here, I've already checked to make sure that the the end was was nicely cut off. You're gonna there's a there's a little a little lever there that you're going to to push down while you put the filament in, and I'm I'm so used to um, to one of the upgraded hot ends that. Um, this is a little bit different feel than I'm used to, but uh, I, I cut the end off again anyway. Once you think you have it, you can go into the menu and bring the bring the position of the of the Z up. You're going to want to see to see the filament actually squirting out of the bottom a little bit. And there I'm bringing the filament up a little bit, the, the head up a little bit, and just as I as I grab that lever, I'm pushing the filament down, and it's it's looking good. When well, this printer at the it was coming out at an angle, it almost looked like there was a little bit of a of a clog in the in the extruder. It it really wouldn't surprise me if if it did, but as I started printing it, it started behaving. I'm mounting the SD card and going to the the G code file that I want to print. And I'm choosing the 3. G code. Now, it seems like it seems like every iteration of this printer comes with different different sample files.
as you saw, the printer homed itself. So what happens is it goes, it goes uh, to the left until it hits that micro switch. The bed then goes to the back and hits the micro switch, and then your uh, your whole carriage comes down until it hits that micro switch as well. If you have any kind of um, any kind of thumping of, of belts just just grinding, then make sure to check your micro switches. I had a problem with the Z micro switch. It it, it really wasn't lining up with the uh, with the the carriage that would hit it in the back, and I needed to to just bend that forward a little bit. And that's it. That's the unboxing and the, the assembly of the Maker Select i3. That's this one right here still. I've done a few cosmetic modifications to it. Um, I will be doing some print adjustments and some print modifications such as tightening the belts, um, a new cooling fan, um, extruder gear, and a Micro Swiss all metal hot end, but you don't need any of those things if you don't want them. This printer out of the box, after you make some fixes and some changes to it, and we'll talk about that in a second, it's going to give you a very decent quality. It's going to give you a quality that, that you're happy with. It's going to be a, give you a quality you would have no problem giving prints to friends and family with, or maybe even prototyping parts, things like that. It's a very capable printer. But uh, several of the printers that we've that we've purchased had uh, little mechanical issues with them, where we've had to recenter belts, we've had to tighten up all the bolts, um, we've had to change, you know, make some changes here or there, and this printer's full of that. If you don't mind tinkering around, if you don't mind making adjustments and things like that, this printer is for you. You're also going to get a couple of things with that printer. The first thing is this micro SD card. You're going to want to copy all the files off this card to a, a name brand card and you're going to want to throw this away. Even the SD is, is junk. Um, three out of the four of the SD to micro SD adapters that I've, uh, that I've worked with um, just don't work. and um, I've, I've read so many horror stories of people continually using these cards and having having issues and uh, you know as soon as they went to like a name brand SD card micro SD card all their all their issues went away so you can use the SD adapter or you can use a USB micro SD adapter uh, to get all your files over to there the, the card comes with like 4G code files even if the card comes defective you can go online and you can get you might be able to find the G code files online or just make your own. It's it's pretty simple. The micro SD card comes with a copy of Cura, which is a a free uh, slicing program, which and that takes your STL 3D files and, and puts them into the slices that the 3D printer can read. Um, you can download that freely online. You do not need need that. Um, you are also going to want to get yourself a nice set of wrenches, and as I mentioned, you're going to want to pull all the bolts, at least loosen them up. Put a little bit of thread lock on them, or if you don't want to do thread lock, just tighten every bolt down and um, and go from there. As I said, you don't need to make any modifications at all, or you can make modifications and, and take your print quality um, just, that, just that further. Um, as soon as this video goes live, I'm going to put um, a, a comparison of the exact same print, the exact same set of instructions on the, mod, the unmodified printer and my modified printer back there, and we're going to put them on Twitter. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below on the video. Uh, if you like this video, you're, you're telling us that you like it. If you, if you give us a thumbs up on it, and if you want to see new content, uh, if you want to get notifications of the new content, give us a, a subscribe. If you have a mono price, uh, Maker Select i3. If you've got um, the Wan Hal, which is um, what the mono price i3 is, um, is rebranded from. If you've done any of the modifications, if you've done any 3D prints wrong, share them with us on Twitter. We're at star.make. And I really hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for, thanks for spending it with us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Who you calling wingnut, you wingnut?